Hi, my name is Anna Bozeman, and I will be representing the affirmative today. There are two primary choices in life, to accept, accept conditions as they exist or to accept the responsibility for changing them. This quote by Dennis Waitley explains that each individual must make the choice to act in order to make a difference in society. On a bigger scale, citizens of a country must act as well to make a change or else their lawmakers and governments may continue to gain power and authority. However, in Middle Eastern countries, many citizens are not given the liberty to do so. It is imperative that citizens have individual liberty, and democracy promotion in the Middle East is the best way to achieve this. That is why I stand firmly in favor of the proposition result. The United States' efforts to promote democracy in the Middle East are desirable. To make this, in order to make this debate a clear and more definite one, I offer the following terms from Merriam-Webster, freedictionary.com, and CIA.gov. United States, North American Republic containing 50 states. Efforts, the total work done to achieve a particular end. Promote, to contribute to the growth or prosperity of something. Democracy, the idea of government in which the supreme power of people is invested in the people and exercised by them directly. Middle East, the geographic region where Europe, Africa, and Asia meet, including such countries as Armenia, Azerbaijan, Bahrain, Gaza Strip, Georgia, Iran, Iraq, Israel, Jordan, Kuwait, Lebanon, Omar, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Syria, Turkey, United Arab Emirates, West Bank, and Yemen. Desirable, worth seeking or doing as advantageous, beneficial, or wise. The highest value in today's debate must be that of individual liberty. Individual liberty is defined as an individual's freedom from, un from unjust or undue government control. The criterion which we will use it to measure my value of liberty must be that of domestic and foreign stability. Domestic and foreign stability is defined as the absence of a large-scale violence in a country, a region, and or surrounding countries and regions. My criteria uphold my value because when citizens of a country have the individual liberties, it makes societies less prone to violent extremism, both domestically and internationally, thus promoting domestic and foreign stability. My value supports the resolution because a policy supporting democracy and human rights is based on the conviction that over time, the freely express, expressed will of the people is the best guarantee of freedom, order, and security, and thus is desirable. We begin with contention one. Decreased conflict paves the, paves the way to increased stability on a domestic scale. One of the most fundamental rights valued by mankind is individual liberty. Lack of democracy, and therefore utility of another form of government, such as a dictatorship, may actually suppress this liberty, but democracy helps individuals obtain, obtain it. With democracy, individuals are not only given the chance to voice their opinions and concern, concerns, but they are allowed to make those opinions and concerns count for something, which to some is considered the ultimate reward of individual liberty. For the most recent generations of us born in the U.S., individual liberties have, have come natural to Americans in the sense that they've never been without it. However, for some Middle Eastern countries, oppression of individual, liber individual liberty is a constant issue. Many Middle Eastern countries, such as Syria, have a form of government in which the entire country is ruled by a single person or group of people. In these types of governments, such as monarchies or dictatorships, there is little to no room for individual liberty. Author David Courtright expresses in his book, Winning Without War, that citizens who have opportunities to dissent and petition for redress of grievances are less likely to resort to violence and making themselves heard. Also, according to the Council on Foreign Relations, democracy's support for pluralism prevents human assets, including religious and ethnic minorities, women and migrants, from being squandered. Indeed, a shortage of economic opportunities and allies for agreements has, has contributed significantly to the ongoing upheaval in the Middle East. We continue with contention too. Pluralism is precisely what is needed to stop violent extremism from wreaking havoc on the world. In addition to domestic stability, democracy promotion also increases foreign stability. This is because conflict inside a country may disrupt its trade, including with Western countries. When this happens, it threatens economic growth due to the fact that the 15 core Middle Eastern countries control more than 40% of the world's oil reserves and also plays huge roles in most countries' economy. Serious internal unrest, domestic terrorism, and especially full-scale civil war could threaten oil production and transportation. Therefore, when domestic issues can be resolved and stability there <coughs> increases, the stability in other countries increases as well, indicating that democracy promotion has desirable effects. We conclude with contention three. Countries in and surrounding the Middle East desire democracy. According to Pew Research and Gallup polls in 2011, over 70% of Egyptians and Jordanians believe that democracy is preferable to any other kind of government. And in 2006, more than 80% of Algerians, Jordanians, Kuwaitis, and Moroccans believe that despite its drawbacks, democracy was the best system of government. These statistics indicate that a substantial amount of Middle Eastern citizens find democracy to be desirable. One Middle Eastern country in, spe in specific, Armenia, stated that their aim was to build a Western-style democracy as the basis of their form of government according to the CIA. The Council on Foreign Relations notes that one of the few truly robust findings in international relations 
is that established democracies never go to war with one another. Foreign policy realists advocate working with other governments on the basis of interest, irrespective of character, and suggest that this approach best preserves stability around the world, according to Council on Foreign Relations. Today, when we are asked if U.S. efforts to promote democracy are desirable, the answer is a definite yes. Democracy best provides citizens with individual liberty, and as we've learned, individual liberty best ensures domestic and foreign stability. Nations that utilize democracy never go to war with one another, um, thus increasing the possibility for world peace. And finally, democracy is desired by many people, as we have been shown by the Council on Foreign Relations, CIA, and David Courtright in his book, Winning Without War. That is why I asked for the affirmative. I now stand ready for CX. Okay, so give me a definition of your value. My value is individual liberty, which is freedom from unjust or undue government control. Uh, you, uh, give me your criteria. Domestic and foreign stability. Domestic and foreign stability. Can you explain to me why that flows into your case? Because by promoting democracy, you have a better chance of increasing domestic and foreign stability. And why is that? Because, like I've explained, democracies never go to war with one another. So if the Middle East were to promote democracy, if prom democracy were to be promoted in the Middle East, then they would be less likely to go with to war with other democracies, which increases them, their domestic stability and their foreign stability. Okay. And can, can I get your first contention? There, the headline. Decreased conflict paves the way to increase stability on a domestic scale. And what do you mean? Can I, get, can I get a summary of that in your other words? Basically what I just said. If you decrease the conflict in a country, then you increase the stability. If there's no civil wars going on, then that country is more stable. Did you give any examples of conflicts going on in these Middle Eastern countries? Would you like me to? Yes, please. Um, for instance, Iraq. They had a lot of civil war conflict. And without that conflict, they'd be more stable. All right. And uh, what was your second contention? My second contention explained that pluralism is also precisely what is needed to stop violent extremism from wreaking havoc on the world. So it's talking about stability in a more foreign. So in, the, in this contention, you're basically talking about like how if we if we promote foreign stability, it stops us from being for like America to be in trouble from like violent terrorism. No, I'm saying that if you decrease the conflict inside of a country, they're less like they're more stable, and if they're more stable, then the world is more stable. Would you agree violent terrorist groups have arisen mainly because of the promotion of Western expansion and democracy in the Middle East? No. Okay. Um, what was your third contention? My third contention gave several examples of countries and places that actually said that they preferred democracy. And it gave reasons why. Or name the two countries that you named, or the three, how many countries did you name? Egyptians, Jordanians, Algerians, Kuwaitis, Moroccans, and Armenians. That's all located in Africa, right? No. Where are those at? The Middle East. I mean, like, you just named... I thought those were all Egyptian, like, oh, those are all, or not, I thought those are all located in the north of Africa. No. Jordan, Egypt, Jordan is, Armenian. Armenia is part of the Middle East. Okay. But anyways, um, all right, and here, and the whole, the resolution is United States efforts to promote democracy in the Middle East. Your whole condition, you never understood why it's, you know, I really never got the gr grasp of why you think it's okay for the United States, or why the United States thinks it's okay to promote democracy. Why, why is it their job to promote democracy as well? Time. Right, thank you. I'll take the rest of it.